let's take a look at France's Omni Roll fighter, the Dassault Rafale. Before we get started, be sure to check out my other video on the one airplane the Rafale is often compared to, the Eurofighter. Also, since the Rafale is a French-made fighter, many of the terms, of course, will be in French. I will do my best to pronounce words correctly. Let me know how I did in the comments below. The Dassault Rafale is a French-designed and produced multi-role fighter, intended to perform aerial reconnaissance, air supremacy, interdiction, ground support, strike missions, anti-ship, and even nuclear deterrence missions. Because of this vast range of mission profiles, the Rafale is often referred to as an omni-role fighter. Notable features include a delta wing, canards, twin engines, a single vertical stabilizer, and a permanently extended refueling probe. The word Rafale roughly translates into gust of wind or burst of fire in a more military sense. Let's take a look at some specifications of the Rafale. Length 15.27 meters Height 5.34 meters Wingspan 10.9 meters Maximum speed Mach 1.8 at altitude Empty weights 10,300 kilograms for the B model 9,850 kilograms for the C model and 10,600 kilograms for the M model Maximum takeoff weight 24,500 kilograms Engines Each Snecma M88-2 50.04 kN thrust dry or 75 kN with afterburner Thrust to weight ratio 0.988 with 100% fuel and 2 EM air-to-air -air missiles, 2 IR air-to-air -air missiles on the version B model. The Rafale is armed with an internal GIAT 30 30mm revolver cannon. Designed to be both effective in air-to-air -air as well as air-to-ground rolls, the GIAT 30 can fire up to 2,500 rounds per minute and fire either continuously or selected to fire in bursts of either 0.5 seconds or 1 second. Additionally, the Rafale has an impressive 14 hardpoints, with 13 on the M version, more on that later. These hardpoints can hold payloads up to 9,500 kilograms and are used to carry various ordnance, both air-to-air -air and air-to-ground munitions, which allow the Rafale to perform as a true omni-roll fighter. Some air-to-air -air examples include the Short Range R-550 Magic Missile The Short or Medium Range Fire and Forget Mica Missile which can be radar guided or infrared guided or the Ultra Long 150 km Range Meteor Missile which boasts a 60 km No Escape Zone For air to ground missions the Rafale can take the conventional Mark 82 series of bombs along with the suite of Paveway Laser Guided Bombs Additionally the Rafale can also equip the MBDA Apache Anti-Runway Cruise Missile, which is as devastating as it sounds, the MBDA Low Observable Storm Shadow Cruise Missile, or the Scalp EG as it is known in France. For anti-ship operations, the Sea Skimming Exocet Missile can be used, and finally for nuclear deterrence, the ASMPA Nuclear Cruise Missile can be equipped. The ASMPA can have a yield of up to 300 kilotons. To be an Omni-Roll fighter, the Rafale needs to have the best sensor suite available. Today, the Rafale uses the RBE2AA radar, which is an actively electronically scanned array or AESA radar. The RBE2 radar can quickly switch between air-to-air -air and air-to-ground modes and provides excellent spectral purity a wide bandwidth and ECCM or electronic counter countermeasures. It is important to note that the Rafale is the first European based aircraft to equip an AESA radar system. Additionally, the Rafale makes use of a long range optoelectronic system known as Front Spectra Optronics or FSO. The FSO is a passive sensor system which enables firing of infrared or heat seeking missiles at beyond visual range distances. Since FSO is optically based, it is immune to jamming and can be used to provide long-range covert surveillance. Furthermore, 
The FSO provides laser range-finding capabilities for ground, sea, and air targets. To provide situational awareness and electronic warfare capabilities, the Rafale uses the Spectra system. Spectra integrates fully with other aircraft systems and provides multi-layer threat warning capabilities against hostile missiles, lasers, and radars. Long-range detection, localization, and identification of threats are carried out by Spectra, which allows the pilots to select the best countermeasures to deal with the identified threats. Spectra also includes an updatable threat library and provides a next-generation missile warning system. The Rafale also makes use of advanced data links and data fusion, which effectively provides the Rafale a complete view of the integrated battle space. And finally, the Rafale's surface area is 70% composite materials, and while not a fully stealth aircraft, the use of composites and S-duct air intakes to conceal engine fan blades means that the Rafale has a reduced radar cross-section, to the point that many of the features which reduce the radar signature are still classified. Dating back to the 1970s, the French Navy and Air Force began working on requirements for a new fighter. In an effort to reduce costs, a decision was made to develop a single fighter that could fulfill both roles. At the same time, efforts to develop a pan-European fighter were already underway. In 1979, this effort was known as the European Collaborative Fighter Project and then renamed the European Combat Aircraft or ECA. France contributed to the aerodynamic layout of the proposed fighter, and after some disagreements in 1981, a new program called the Future European Fighter Aircraft or FEFA program began in 1983. The FEFA program included Spain, West Germany, Italy, the UK, and France. However, France would soon exit the FEFA, and ultimately, Spain, Italy, the UK, and a reunified Germany would go on to produce the excellent Eurofighter Typhoon. Meanwhile, France would develop a new fighter on its own. This was no small task. France would not only have to develop an airframe, but also the engines, avionics, and weapon systems all in-house. Additionally, since the requirement was for the new fighter to serve in the Air Force and Navy, it would be replacing no fewer than five different aircraft. By 1984, Dassault had been selected and a technology demonstrator was planned. In 1986, the technology demonstrator took its maiden flight, where it went supersonic and took only 300 meters of runway to land. Further trials were performed with the demonstrator including carrier takeoffs and landings. It is interesting to note that the technology demonstrator was initially powered by the General Electric F404 GE400 engines, the same engine used in the F-18 Hornet. The GE engines were used initially as the Snecma M88s were not considered ready at the time. By 1990, the Snecma M88s were installed in the Rafale demonstrator, which was then redesignated the Rafale A. The Rafale A would ultimately go on to demonstrate the Rafale's super cruise ability and log some 865 flights. The A model helped both the French Air Force and Navy develop their variants to meet their needs. The Air Force requested a single-seat version which became known as the Rafale Chasseur or C model. Chasseur translates to fighter or hunter. The Air Force also requested a two-seat model which became known as the Rafale B. The prototype B version was used for weapons testing and carrying heavy loads. The Navy version became known as the Rafale M, which was a single-seat variant with carrier takeoff and landing equipment and weighs about 500 kilograms more as a result. The new B, C, and M prototypes differed from the technology demonstrator in that they made extensive use of composites and radar absorbing materials, which would go on to be the standard in all production models. The design process of the Rafale was immensely helped by the use of Dassault's proprietary computer-aided three-dimensional interactive application software or Katia. Katia allowed for digital markups as well as numerous efficiency improvements. From a design perspective, the Rafale combines a delta wing along with canards to provide maximum agility. The airframe is built to handle G-loads of negative 3.6 and positive 9 Gs and even up to 11 Gs in an emergency. The Rafale was designed to be as simple to maintain as possible. One such example are the engines, which can be removed in just one hour with only two persons performing the work. Initial production Rafales were to the France 1 or F1 standard. 
As an initial batch, the F-1 series did not include air-to-ground capabilities. In 2006, the F-2 series began deliveries which included air-to-ground capabilities. Beginning in 2008 and continuing through today, the F-3 series have been delivered and include nuclear capability. All operational F-1 and F-2 series aircraft have been upgraded to the F-3 standard, delivering on the design requirement for being a true Omni-Roll fighter. While initially 330 orders were proposed, this number was cut back following the end of the Cold War and other budget cutbacks over the years. To date, over 200 Rafales have been produced and are showing promising results as an export fighter. France is understandably the single largest operator of the Rafale, with the French Air Force or Army de l'Air operating 110 Bs and C Rafales in bases across France, and the French Navy or Marine Nationale operating just over 40 Rafales on carriers and air bases. It is important to note that the naval version of the Rafale, the M model, is able to land and take off from US carriers and is the only non-US fighter to be able to do so. In fact, some Rafale pilots are qualified to operate from American carriers. Other customers include Egypt, which was the first export customer of the Rafale, and currently operates over 20 examples, with more on the way. Qatar is another customer with 15 examples and another 21 on order. India is the most recent customer with 36 Rafales on order and several being delivered. Potential future customers include Spain, Indonesia, Malaysia, and Switzerland. The first combat deployment of the Rafale occurred in 2002 in support of Operation Enduring Freedom. Rafale M's operating off the carrier Charles de Gaulle flew patrols over Afghanistan. From 2009 through 2011, Rafale supported NATO ground forces in Afghanistan. During Operation Armatan, which was the name of the effort given to support the French intervention in Libya in 2011, Rafales were initially used as reconnaissance aircraft and then led some of the first air-to-ground strikes against targets near Benghazi. It is important to note that the Rafales did not require additional suppression of enemy air defenses or seed aircraft to accompany them. Typically, seed aircraft will come in first to take out enemy air defenses, but the Rafales handled this using their Spectra systems, operationally demonstrating their Omni-Fighter capabilities. In 2013, in Mali, as part of Operation Serval, Rafale supported the Mali government in combating radical Islamic forces who sought an overthrow of the existing regime. The airstrikes conducted by the Rafales were said to be instrumental in causing the rebel forces to withdraw. In 2014, Rafales were used in support of combating ISIS forces in northern Iraq. Initially, the Rafales would be used as a reconnaissance aircraft identifying targets for U.S. warplanes, but eventually, the Rafales would go on to perform airstrikes themselves. In 2015, Rafales again, operating from the Charles de Gaulle, struck targets associated with ISIS. And most recently, in 2018, Rafales performed airstrikes against targets in Syria during the Syrian Civil War. The Rafale has an extensive and proven combat record, and these operations not only illustrate its effectiveness as a weapon, but also its operational readiness as most of these missions involve long flights and extensive aerial refueling to reach their targets. The Dassault Rafale is expected to serve well into the 2040s. However, Germany and France have jointly started working on their sixth generation fighter known as the Future Combat Air System or FCAS. It is assumed that the new FCAS fighter will complement and eventually replace the venerable Rafale. What do you think? Is the Rafale the best European fighter? Where does it rank in today's 4th and 5th generation fighters? Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and click the bell for notifications. If you'd like to join our growing community of like-minded aviation and history enthusiasts, join the Discord. Link will be in the description below. Stay safe, and see you next time.